Yeah. The largest risk, no matter how tight your system is, number one factor is internal threats. Disgruntled yeah. employees that get pissed off because they got fired or whatever. Yeah. And that's like one of the main things I ask you know, business owners. It's like, what is your onboarding and offboarding process? That's exactly where I start. I don't go in to go, oh, you have two-factor authentication. On an effort. No, I start at the people. Yeah. Because humans make mistakes. Computers do what they're told, period. Yeah. So it's like- Well, and it's, it's both intentional- Right. And unintentional. Right. Because what you're oh, describing sure. with somebody clicking on an email and accidentally exposing the company to something. Right. Yep. That That's education. Have right? It's like, it's like well, they're really generous and they wanted to help out the Nigerian prince. That's right. Said that yeah. All this like money's in escrow. Ten thousand dollars. to send Bitcoin. me ten grand. <laughs> send, 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 give me uh, target gift cards, please. Please yeah. send them to me. Yeah. yeah. So. How many people know about the CIA? Uh, everyone. Are you sure about that? If you've seen a Jason Bourne movie. American How? Television. I don't think we're talking about the same CIA. Uh, they they okay. use the same overhead shot of Langley in every television. Oh, yeah, that's very true. That's like the only shot they can ever use. Because they can't get an actual shot inside. <laughs> <laughs> is that? No. Uh, the CIA I'm talking about is actually called the CIA Triad. And this is confidentiality integrity and availability this is like the pinnacle of what every cybersecurity agency ever uses to protect a business so confidentiality what do you think it means like in your own words uh keeping things secret how password protected okay there's there one go. what else i don't know what in, else? A, in a building lock and key physical. physical security okay so you have encryption all right. Physical security. Anything yep. else you can think about? What's the most annoying thing that's come out recently? <clears throat> Firearms. <it>. You know. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Confidentiality, so sure. Beep, beep, beep. Getting um, closer. What about 2FA? Yeah, two-factor. Yeah, yep. I was about to say Most that. annoying yeah. thing ever. Everyone yeah. hates it, but that's the new normal. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> because it is harder to crack. Um, do you know what different variations besides writing the number in for two factor authentication what are the two what are two forms of um i don't know let's ask danny devito our special <laughs> guest today he might have What's the up, answer danny? to this how you doing danny? Yeah. that's real life size of danny <laughs> DeVito. uh aaron's out this week so we have danny devito sitting in so uh i am playing the role uh, that aaron normally would which is the clueless role um so i i, I don't know the answer to that question so Th think about it they take like a wild guess. Usually, all right. What's usually, the question again? I was distracted by. Oh Danny yeah, Danny DeVito, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you log into a system, what is a form of two-factor authentication? You already should know yeah, one of them. Email, so, uh, text, cell phone. Right. right. So, yeah. so receiving an email with a code. Yes, exactly. Right. Or yeah. using a, an authenticator app with a code. So yeah. that's one form. There's yeah. actually another form. Um, usually, it's something you know, mm -hmm. something you are. Or something you have. Oh, like secret questions, right? And answers to secret that's, questions. That's another yeah. form of, right. Yeah. So it's like yeah. something you know. Yeah. There right? is. Um, I actually have in my hand. A device, you know. Right? I have a UB key. This is something I have. And this also on it has to have something I know. So I, you cannot, if you wanted to use this, you couldn't because I would plug in a computer. I also have to put a pin in as well. So it doesn't matter if someone steals this, they can't use it for my keys. So I, every system I have, I log into this. And then I have an RSA token, which is pretty much the same thing as an authenticator app, but this is specific for one business and one business owner. You actually have to get issued these. So a company has to go through all of this and they have to actually license these out. So if I lose this, I'm in big trouble. Yeah. Um, but that is confidentiality. Integrity. What do you think integrity is? Uh, trust. Okay, how, how do we trust systems and, and like, data? Uh, you just do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, so is this to do with, like, is this uh, to do with, like, data storage or what? Okay, you, that's yeah. one form of it, right? Yeah. So yep. data storage, <clears throat> we call them checksums, mm -hmm. right? So it's, like, check the hash. You'll hear, like, in the hacker movies, you got to make sure it's all valid. That's actually a valid thing. You have to make sure the thing you downloaded, you can actually have what's called a checksum, and it'll run a mathematical computation saying, hey, this is bit for bit correct mm -hmm. and has not been changed. So the integrity of the files you have downloaded have not been manipulated in any way. Okay. So do they type really fast like this? Like oh, yeah, do? totally. Just to start smashing. <laughs> See, I'd be if that was the actual way of hacking, I'd be terrible at it because I'm 
horrible at misspelling. <laughs> <laughs> so well, have like, you watched um, spell Mr. Robot at all? Uh, yes. Great film. I love it. There's actually a lot of good concepts of hacking and, and stuff that they I kind of got the premise of the, of the show of, of I'm not going to give any spoilers because you haven't probably right. seen it. Yeah, it's really good. You should watch it, by the way. Um, it's like, oh, he's fighting himself. So. Yeah, pretty much. But the whole thing, like in the ether rich and all that cool stuff, whatever. The system is failing and blah, 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 blah. But um, I thought like the pinnacle of accuracy with hacking was swordfish. movie hackers in the 90s. No, I would say swordfish. <laughs> but not the pinnacle. Swordfish. Swordfish, That's not <laughs> swordfish was a good one, too, as well. Have you seen, sword, um, have you seen swordfish? Yeah, of course. The yeah, Matrix, yeah. Trinity, where uh-huh. she's hacking the uh, power plant, She they actually taught her how to actually run certain exploits. Like, so they can actually get it accurate in the film. So where she's actually typing, it's not just like a screen on a screen server. She's actually working an exploit onto something that they have on the back end so they can actually look legit. Nice. Which is which is awesome screen work. It's like, hey, by the way, you have to learn how to pen test a system for this role. <laughs> That's an actor's requirement right there. You have to learn Linux systems. Let's teach you that first. Um, so integrity is... so. Uh, data storage data storage making sure things are the way they are there's multiple ways of doing that as well um like file permissions no one else can edit it that kind of goes back to um confidentiality no one can change this besides me or you or whatever whoever has the the right to do something that maintains that integrity for that system so that's why those two kind of sort of form this triangle you can't have one without the other um Encryption's another way, right? That's protecting it. And then how do you validate the encryption's working? Your integrity. Um, and then availability. That's your A, CIA. How long a system's up for? How easy it is to make sure everything is actually gainable? I, I have all this stuff and data's everywhere in the cloud, but I can't get to it. Yep. The system's down. That's your availability. So those three is the pinnacle of cybersecurity, infrastructure, IT. Uh, every IT professional should be using that to justify a system a product, a business process, like how does what what does this process open up confidentiality wise? So well, yeah, yeah, so let me ask you this question. So where does uh you know, you hear a company was hacked, eighty thousand client, you know, <clears throat> personal records were accessed, right? Does that fall under C or I would I? S- I would say C. C. Yeah. Right? Because that is protection confidentiality that is making sure things are protected yeah you know that is you know uh, making sure for instance like um you can't sell the business without his authorization and vice versa yep. that's another form of confidentiality yeah because that's not just in you know data that's in business practice and policies and just in best practice and programming sure. right yeah. i can't push major production code without having four other people review it and saying hey this looks good let's test it and then push it out to our end users. That's yep. confidentiality. Yep. Right. Um, so, pers- so the, any of those big stories are ultimately a breakdown. Somewhere there was a breakdown yep. in, in C. Right? Yep. yep. Or uh, actually, I, mean, I as well, like uh, phishing emails, mm-hmm. right? That's integrity. You're downloading something you think is something else. Yeah. Okay. And then you just downloaded something that wasn't what you thought it was. And now yeah. it has some kind of Trojan horse or some kind of exploit or, yep. you know, threat vector that's added into your network. The and now human every, exploit. That's the big one. That's integrity yeah. and confidentiality, big two, right? So humans are the Your people easiest. being a risk, right? That's <laughs> the, yeah. the largest risk. No matter how tight your system is, number one factor is internal threats. Disgruntled yeah. employees that get pissed off because they got fired or whatever, yep. and that's like one of the main things I ask company, you know, business owners. It's like, what is your onboarding and offboarding process? That's exactly where I start. I don't go in to go, oh, you have two-factor authentication on every. No, I start at the people. Yeah, because humans make mistakes. Computers do what they're told. Period. Yeah. So it's like, well, and it's it's both intentional, right, and unintentional, right? Because what you're oh, describing sure. with Somebody clicking on an email and accidentally exposing the company to something, right? Yep. That that's they education. Have right? it's like, it's like they're really generous and they wanted to help out the Nigerian prince. That's right. Said that yeah. All this money's like, in have escrow. Ten thousand dollars. I need you to send Bitcoin. me ten grand. Send, 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 give me a uh, Target gift cards, please. Please yeah. send them to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, leading leading down that path, though, it's like making sure people are aware, right? It's like you can have all of these shiny new tools in place, but if they're not trained on how to properly protect themselves, people yeah. are the number one threat. Yeah. No matter no matter what you do. Yeah. It's I you know, I recently was having a conversation with someone and their 
in their accounting department. I won't say who it was. Uh, we can talk offline about who it was, but uh, it uh, there uh, somebody in their accounting department basically got an email saying, "Hey, you need to wire us ten thousand dollars," and w- they were presenting themselves as a vendor, right? Yep. And this like newer person in the accounting department didn't really know and just processed a wire transaction, right? Which is particularly yeah. bad because they only really have one vendor they ever buy <clears throat> from, right? And this this is like a different person, right? Yep. Uh, but she was confused and didn't know and just inadvertently did it. And fortunately enough, their bank is like so like old school, right? Because it's like a like a smaller local bank. Yep that they need a person to approve like every transaction transactions don't just like happen automatically right, right? right and so it was hung up in that queue so they were able to to cancel to catch it, it right? before it was but that's cashed. that's an example of that right it's just like exposing the company yep. unnecessarily. so i was uh i got a sales lead in the in my pipeline and it was some claim to be some church that wanted some you know advice and stuff and i was like yeah. well here's my quote and they sent me a check for double I was like, no, this is not the agreed print. Never talked to him on the phone. Yeah. It was all email. It's like, we can get a discovery meeting. Let's hang out on Google Meets yeah. or whatever you're not. Like, yeah. let's have a phone call. Nothing. I got the check in mail. It was a verified check. Um, yeah. No. We've but gotten a couple of those. I was like, I'm not cashing this check. And like, have you cashed a check in? I was like, you would know if I cashed your check in. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. going to cash something in that's double what we agreed on i mean this is this is outrageous. scammers getting really creative right i mean there's like a you know we've had multiple people for years email us saying hey we want you to build us a website and we're gonna uh you know pay this much up front right, right. and then it's like it's some kind <clears throat> of uh when way they, of them manipulating the price they've, point they've, to dic- get money they've back. dictated terms pricing and payment terms before i even quote on a price yeah and i'm like yeah no, it's just weird. It's off. It's weird. It's, it's off tempo. It's, yeah, yeah, and and um, I've always usually I've just ignored those. Yeah, it'd be someone else's problem. Yeah, so. I think that barrier in entry too is um, having the discovery meeting. That's mm-hmm. like really is like are they actually serious? Like let's yeah. take an hour out of your day, let's put a face to this thing. Yep. I don't even know if you're real or not, and then we can move forward. So it's like you have that kind of sales you know that cycle itself where you're not even paying attention to the tire kickers anymore it's like okay all these bots that are just sending you emails whatever right the junk mail yeah yep well i know it's a real a real person a real company that you're dealing with right, right? yeah not like if any of you have seen always sunny you don't want to be dealing with a wolf cola like uh danny devito has so right? front organization in, in, so in regards to business then like your average business owner or things they need to put in place to protect themselves obviously from what can the average person do? So, like, for example, with us, we have systems in place and procedures in place as far as, like, if someone wants to work with us, we have to do an exploratory call. You're not just going to send me money and then right. accept as, as attractive as that sounds. Um, or I've had businesses, like, on the Lux Motor Card side where big businesses, like well-known, established businesses, come to us and, like, all right, we want this, but we want you to do all this work for free then once uh, we'll do net 30 terms, uh, then we'll send you payment. I'm like, uh, as attractive as it is, and I can sign that uh, document, which is a legal binding document, but then if you just decide not to pay, I now have to pay money to go and fight that. Yeah. So with Lex Motor Card, I don't accept any yeah. of that. Yeah. If you want to do net terms, I require half up front. Yeah. I don't give a damn who you are. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, cover the manufacturing cost. It makes and sense. Yeah, you cover my costs at yep. the end of the day, and then we can do net terms on the final delivery. That's fine. Um, but well, that, I'm, particularly I'm, for a small business, right, where your risk, <clears throat> you're laying out so much, so much more risk than you would be potentially gaining, right? And yeah, and, and you don't have the vendor relationship set up yet. It's right? like I don't, I don't know you. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I've had other people like, uh, well, we do net terms on everything. I'm like, yeah, we. Good. Congratulations. Our, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> our policy is, I only do net terms on anything over ten thousand dollars. Yeah. If it's under ten grand, you can just pay it with a damn credit card. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Th- this idea where everything has to be net terms is ridiculous for anything custom. Um. Because the, thi- the the point of net terms is like, uh, especially like if you want a retail store, I get that that premise where you're somewhat insulating yourself, you're giving yourself time to make money and sell that product, then you pay the vendor. But when you do custom, I'm paying money up front. Right. And then the problem is that if you decide not to pay, 
I'm I'm screwed. I can't resell that right. product. So, um, so so yeah. from the, the, from that standpoint, then the how can a business person? Because most people don't have a high dedicated a, a dedicated IT person to uh, protect their business. Well, I think it's kind of uh, layers in a way, right? Um, individual, right? Before you even hit the business, because most services that you use nowadays, all um, like QuickBooks, Monday, Airtable, all these SaaS platform softwares as a service, right? Yep. They're implementing security controls that you don't even have the option to opt out in anymore. So it's like you already have those layers. Certain layers of protection that are built in. Just kind of baked into that. like yeah. your business practice. Now, if we're talking about your individual self on how to be better cyber aware or protect yourself in that aspect, uh, to start, I would pay for a password manager. That is the biggest thing. Weak passwords besides phishing emails yep. are the number one cause for vulnerable systems. Yeah. So if you have a system that generate I, I if I lost my password manager tomorrow, I would be so screwed. Yeah. Because I don't know any of my not even my not my Gmails, not my not my Apple ID. I don't know anything. All my recovery, I have recovery emails and all that, but guess what? Those recovery emails also have unique huh. passwords. I don't know and so so my terminology, if it's difficult for me, it's ex it should be extremely difficult for somebody else to get my information. Yeah. My wife hates it. He's like, why do you have to like Amazon's like you know thirty two characters long plus you know one time password like it's because it's your credit ridiculous. card numbers on there right? right yep so so well only the last four yeah but they can still buy but they stuff, can buy stuff right? exactly yeah right. change the address buy stuff yep. and if you Actually, don't pay attention to that and then you can you know have yeah. that issue but that's why I have two factor authentication on everything everything yeah. that, that, yeah. that's the, that's becoming the <clears> new <throat> normal everything is like my bank account I don't have a password I have a pin and then I have a, a well, I have a, a pin that never changes, plus an authentication code at the kin that changes every minute. Yeah, I don't have a password for that, so so it's like everything is being coming more uniquely defined with two-factor authentication. Passwords eventually will just be arbitrary, and that's the that's a great system because that means there will like if you have a data breach, oh whoop de do, cool. Unless you can have a way to. Uh, capture somebody's what we call magic links. Mm -hmm. So you, you click on a link, it just automatically logs you in. Unless you can get we call it a man in the middle attack. Unless you can get that information before it gets to the end user and change that user URL for that user to go somewhere else, then it doesn't matter if all their emails get leaked. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's still data breach. It's still bad. I'm not saying it's not, but it, the the um the severity is lessened. It's yeah. a lot less worse, right? Yeah. Um. Well, you know, on that note, and this is, again, I'm not uh, as, as skilled in the IT front as you are, obviously, right? But there's one personal anecdote from a client that we had that I think affects more pretty much all business owners, especially if they're a small business owner. Sure. And that is uh, social media accounts getting hacked, right? And what most people don't realize is Facebook as an example, right? Meta now, right? Meta, yep. All of Meta's backend business manager is all run through individual people. Yep. So everything is assigned to people. At the at the highest level, the super admin of a business is an individual. It always has to be a person that exists on Facebook. And so if uh, that individual's password is weak on Facebook, it compromises all of the business's right. assets, including their their page including any pixels they have installed including their ad account which typically has a credit card attached to it mm -hmm. right and so we actually had a client that her personal account was hacked the that meant that the entire business was now impacted yep they gained access to her super admin account added themselves as an admin to all of those accounts started running ads in india in the matter of like an hour mm -hmm. right overnight and in it was probably country. all automated yep Fortunate enough, she was using a credit card that she was able to like, you know, say, oh, these are not, these are fraudulent charges, yeah. right? But then here's what's wild about it. Uh, you know, we identify the problem, right? We delete the credit card. We delete the ad account, right? All of that is mm -hmm. now removed, right? Uh, <laughs> what, what a lot of people don't realize is that major companies like uh, Facebook and like Netflix and other recurring billing uh, they actually, a few years ago, worked out a deal with these large organizations where if you cancel your credit card, right, uh, and you get a new credit card, 
that credit card information is automatically sent from your banking institution to that like a new that, credit card number yes you oh, you if your credit new. card <clears throat> and the reason they did that was because credit cards were expiring and they still want to be able to charge people no 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 like if you lost a card and got a whole new credit card number if you cancel a card and you get a new card the institution sends that information to the other and the reason we know this the reason we know wow. this is because a month later her new credit card new number and everything added back into the system and that's not like a tinfoil cap like yeah no, you know, i have to look into that because yeah. i'm mm-hmm. weird every couple of years i'll just so cycle my numbers i'll be like i lost or stolen and just cycle my cards yeah. out and start seeing what so cancels. there's, there's a service yeah. um you can yeah. get now uh aaron could you go to um uh privacy.com and bring up on the screen it's not a pet site it's um so what this is is you can create an account it's free uh you connect your bank account but you can create virtual credit cards, essentially, mm-hmm. and you can do uh, as many as you want, and uh, you could put spending limits. So, like, if you wanted something just for like your streaming services, ah, interesting. And if you ever wanted to cancel, that crap that you just talked about, yeah, doesn't happen here. Yeah, because you're basically segmenting your one line of credit for this one credit card into potentially multiple with limits. Right? Yeah. So if you wanted to give um, uh, a card for shopping and put yourself give yourself a limit on something or reject uh, reject certain merchants uh, or so prevent like, your create, kids from create, like buying a bunch renting a bunch so of like, movies for right? example yeah <laughs> create merchant lock cards protect everything yeah. privacy cards uh, locked to the first merchant they are used at huh. so it can't be used anywhere else yeah that's anywhere else so like if you're buying stuff online you're afraid of getting like you have a key lo- like somehow a hacker uh, has a key logger on your stuff yeah uh, they can't use that credit card you wow. know so uh, it's a free well it's, I think it's free for like a few hit pricing uh, on the site. Uh, yeah, it's hmm. if you want like a bunch Up of cards. To Twelve cards per month. So I bet. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. The, the uh, bank I use, uh, Novo, um, for my business, they have virtual cards, and that's all I use. Yeah. I don't have a physical card. Interesting. So. Yeah. And it's great. It's free. So if you wanted to protect yourself in that instance, this is where you could do that. So if you wanted to make a card for social media. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Which actually, if there's a break in trust there, right, which there is with this particular client with social platforms. Do you still get points, though? No. Because mm. this is attached to your bank account, so no. You lose that. That kind of sucks. This is a debit card. Oh, so you cool. couldn't. Oh, this is a debit card. So you couldn't take a line of credit and cut it up like Correct. this. Correct. Uh, interesting. Okay. That's, that's why I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, you know. Because that's why I asked you. I was yeah, like, you, you rack up less thousands exciting. of miles a month. So like yeah. why I have almost two million miles. Nice. With yeah. United. And that's that's a little bit less exciting. You go climb too Kilimanjaro because... now? No, I'm gonna go to Iceland. There you I go. Think, I think that's that's the trip. But yeah, that's the reason why I haven't signed up for this because it doesn't take uh, the well, account. So, well, it's privacy. So, so does so your always, does your bank, your institution, you're talking about, mm-hmm. does that for lines of credit? Like they have credit cards. I'll double check. I don't know yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. Okay. But. Yeah, because I, I think what's what you know what would be valuable is you're doing it with a line of credit. So you also have the protection of it. Well, being I think a the line card. of credit would go into your bank account and then that's fine. Well, out. so, so if you're doing, uh, obviously you're, you're protected by the institution more if you're doing this with a credit card versus a debit card, yes. right? Cause your debit card is attached to your bank account. Like if somebody hacks it, <laughs> they okay. gain access to it. Yep. Right. Uh, but credit card, you could dispute charges, right? Yep. I mean, there's, there's more options. So, um, that I find that I interesting. No. Um, but back to the whole Facebook thing. And and I think that's what, yeah, my point is there are too many business owners that don't realize that their personal Facebook account is where everything, all the assets that you're ever connected to run through. So, yeah. and the same thing would be true for, uh, you know, at, at most of these social platforms anyway. So be mindful of that, okay. right? Like your, your email account that's attached to your Facebook account, it's important that that password's strong. The actual Facebook account, Needs to have two-factor identification. And we call those so. single points of failure, right? Yeah. So it's like uh, you have a business email that's tied to all of your business accounts, but you have a backup email mm-hmm. that is your personal email just in case you get locked out of it, but your backup email has poor password, no two-factor yeah. authentication. Yeah. And you're like, you go through and I discover you know, your email, and then I'm like, oh, I forgot my password. I know his <gasps> personal account, and I can just forget that and send it to that, and I already have access to this. Now I have access to your professional account. Yeah. So and I'd say if you use Google's password manager, I have access to all your passwords now. Wow. That's scary. 
quick, <laughs> right? So, so there's actually standards. So like the the Facebook thing, right? Yeah. So so if uh, we call uh, international standards of uh, IS, IS, I can't remember what the O stands for, but ISO 27001 is a standard for IT systems and security. And you also have NIST, which is like a National Institute Standard of Technology, right? Mm -hmm. um, and having those systems in place or security controls in place like that would prevent those systems. So for, this is like mid to large size businesses, not mom and pop shops, but yep. that's eventually where you lead into. It's like, okay, well you have access to all these points need to be protected if you are to be compliant. It's not law, but if you're like, oh, we're compliant under this and you want that stamp of approval and you get audited and you're not, then you have a whole slew of stuff to deal with, but that will protect your business owners from that, especially if you're trying to push that stuff out. Unless you're Southwest Airlines. Unless you're Southwest Airlines. <laughs> yeah, that was that's more um, software development, like that or life cycle. Lack thereof. Um, Yes. They just weren't investing anymore in upgrading their technology, right? Was that the too. was the idea I was getting from it. And, and their their senior their senior engineers and senior developers were like, This is wrong. Like you're we're just pushing this stuff to production and we're not doing any smoke tests, we're not doing any quality assurance, like this stuff's gonna break. Yep. And it broke. You know, you have like what, thousands of flights, you had pilots in the wrong place, planes in the wrong place, you had what are the the uh, stewards? What are they called? Stewards. Stewards, yeah, they were all in the wrong place. You had yeah. just millions of people well dollars not people just gone just yeah. because of you're just lazy laziness is like the achilles well, heel of and technology. i read an article on it and that i mean that was the internally all of the staff was basically talking about operationally they knew this was going to happen at some yeah. point right and you know there you know it only took this one snowstorm where and it's it's all of your um, exposure to lack of investment becomes obvious when every other airline well, is able to respond. That's, oh, that's failure and be though, agile at the top level of executive. It, it is. It it's is. Fairly, that's yeah. That's leadership. Well, and that was the yeah, point. Definitely. That's the point that this particular captain. It was like a, a opinion piece from him. Was that he long? Was saying, I think I've read that one. Yeah, yeah, and and his point was that their previous COO, uh, C, C, CEO, and COO were heavily involved. They were focused on operations, right? And so they had an understanding of the frontline experience, but that was in two thousand, right? So twenty years, so later. twenty years, yeah. right, are removed. And he stepped down a few years ago, right? And then the new person came in. And it was just really going to be, it was going to be a problem. It was focused right? on profits right. and not yeah. operations. And this and this is why we also have uh, separation of duties. Right, you are in charge of X, Y, Z, and that is it. He's charge of A, B, C, yeah, and that is it. Yeah, and then you can have what's called um, mandatory vacation days, and then you have separation duties where I swap your jobs. So if I say that if I have like a uh, if I'm your security or like your facility security operations manager titles whatever, uh, if I'm investigating, say that I think you're embezzling. And you're the only one that knows about it, then I can swap your jobs and it no longer happens. I know it's you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, another form of two factor authentication is like nuclear launch codes. Okay. So we have mm. the, the President of the United States nuclear has to football. go through like how many the layers? Two keys. <laughs> well, that's just that's just that's the bare minimum yeah. level, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like that's the well, two keys is like the the captain well, of the and, nuke. It's, it's him and Nora, but he doesn't need approval from well, Anyone even else? before that, the the two people on you know your nuclear submarines, right? Yeah. That's you know, we're we're gonna just use that as example. Um, I know a couple of nukes, so yeah. they're pretty cool people. And then you have no idea where their subs are in the world. They will never tell you. It's really cool, uh, and scary. Um, it comes down to those people. They can actually decide not to go through that order. That's the same thing. Right? Uh, the, um, the difference between uh, us and like Putin, there's actually a downline of people that have to approve. On like oh, yeah. Putin's in. oh yeah. So it's actually harder for him than it is for say Joe Biden or even previous President Trump. Uh they could just decide. Well, it's uh they're different it's, areas, right? So if like on land it all comes down to the key turners. So there's there's the the president has to go through the VP and Congress to get approval to even get the launch codes. Launch codes change every so often. I don't remember the frequency at which they change. And then not just that, but it also goes down to the captain. And then the uh, Minutemen, yeah, Minutemen. But you have the the captain, and then you have the you have the CEO and the XO, depending on where it's being launched. They both from. have keys. Well, and, and then, that's if it's a it's and a they ship. have to open up two different safes for right. the actual keys 
to give to the actual people to turn the keys and the people that turn the keys actually know other stuff that they don't they have all of these layers which is great because we don't want just some angry oh, yeah. you know person totally. going, eh, and let's it, nuke somebody like yeah, yeah let's yeah. not do that so i I've, I've i've seen a few uh random uh, uh you know i you know it's a silo uh when it's got a ton of security Oh, definitely. There's no, there's no building. It's just a mound. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it's got. You like, can walk right by it, and not know it. Yeah. Well, so, so people don't even realize how close. Yeah. They are so to I'm, it. I'm in Northern Virginia, right? They built out a ton back in the '60s and '70s. JFK started that, and it was like all of these different facilities for storing, you know, and underground storage for nuclear mm-hmm. weapons and yep. such. And there was a silo, a nuclear silo, in my neighborhood. Right. Yep. And it turned into a public park right at that point. Right. But uh, that's what it was. And it was just throughout the northern Virginia, around the D.C., Maryland yeah. area. They had to have these places. Right. And that's what it was. So like the movie, The Sum of All Fears is like a great. Yeah. Oh, that's a great yeah. movie. I think well, I think most of our understanding of this two. entire process is based on Crimson Tide, uh, <laughs> Hunt for Red October, a bunch, right? bunch of Cold War movies. Uh, what? Uh, Independence Day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty four. <laughs> 24 is a good one. Jack yeah, Bauer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> but so so for small business owners, uh, layers. If you have numbers of layers to prevent, one, your confidentiality from people accessing your stuff, mm-hmm. getting your stuff, you know, accessing and receiving without your permission, right? Uh, making sure it's all protected, you know, all safe behind stuff, right? And making sure it's available, right? That's like those are the things just to think about. And then ask the question, how do I do that? Google's great, great source for that. How do I do this? How do I do that? Right. Or you can ask Chat GPT. Or now. Chat GPT, yeah. How do I do this? Pfft, spits out a list of stuff, right? Um ask a friend, ask somebody else that knows what they're doing, right? That's that's a big thing in cybersecurity too, is knowledge. Is I, I can't stand gatekeepers. I'm like, oh, you just pay me for this. Like, no, like that's the whole point of being cyber aware. The more people that know about it, the more people say, hey, don't don't click on that stupid email. Like, don't yep. click on this. Like, don't do that. But don't be dumb. When you open an email, right. look and see if it says at gmail.com. Right. Right. Well, don't even do that. You can just see it right in the title, right? <laughs> so, so don't weaponize incompetence. Yeah. Like, let's not have that in the workplace. Let's yeah. teach people how to actually be properly secure. And then the longer that goes, the harder it is. I mean. We in cybersecurity are always chasing the hacker. The hacker's always ahead. Yeah. Because they're the ones that find the new stuff. So we're always playing defense. Well, trying... in defense of people that yep. aren't as tech savvy, that is very true, right? Yep. That they have the knowledge and they have the expertise and they're always a little bit ahead. And it's, you know, it gets tough, man. I mean, there are like, there are phishing scams that are like incredibly convincing, right? You open an and email nowadays, and the landing page is like duplicated, right? And it's nowadays like, you have AI and ML to help you, like ChatGPT and Jarvis yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. now you're not getting misspelt language because that's a big thing in phishing emails. Like, well, this sounds weird. It's weird. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, this sounds like a legit yeah. email. Hey, we notice that your password's been you know, about to expire. Click on this link to expire. It's for, from the right person, yeah. has all the right information, has a signature email at the bottom now. It yeah. looks really hard to, to discover. My mom people. screenshotted okay. one and sent it to me, right? And it was like a PayPal landing page. Yep. Right? And I was like, I was like, just just in general, mom, don't click on a link and put your information in. Go to whatever website, right? So if you know you have a PayPal account, right, and you get an email that says, oh, you need to log in yeah. and change your information, don't click whatever links in the email. Just go to PayPal, right? right open up your account and it'll tell you if you need to do something right? there was a good one i actually got and i was really curious about was um i got texted in amazon i was like your password's about to expire and i was like oh yeah i was like huh i was like okay so i sent it i sent it to just a little i call it a mule it's just it's isolated from everything nothing you know just sent the link on there you can type anything in it and it just approves it there's no f- called form validation i can put my name my email and i could put any password it doesn't validate the password obviously won't be like oh yeah your password's incorrect like no it just form caption goes thank you your password's been updated and that was it and it had the amazon logo had some really arbitrary differences in the url and i was like that's very smooth you can put any email i could put like you know a at yahoo.com or like just you know any name whatever and i was like "Hmm." so i spammed it until the server crashed (laughs) nice come on now (laughs) so like why are you gonna do that but yeah layers it all comes down to layers um so it sa- yeah, it one. sounds like you start with 
password, right? I mean, that's like, that's easiest. a very low hanging fruit and, for any And business. if you don't want to use a password manager, an easy way to remember stuff is, uh, or the system I, I've, I've used password before. one, two, three, four, five. Definitely. <laughs> Cats. Um, no names. <clears throat> password is password. No, no names in, in, in passwords. Uh, so a place, a color, an activity, and then symbols and numbers. Mm-hmm. So Arizona bike indigo and then change letters with capital lowercase add little equal signs exclamation points and then you'll be able to remember that very easily Mm. very easy way to come up with a 24 character password on the fly if you really need to yeah or or you can just do a password generator just do it real quick most of them are free nowadays so don't use LastPass. did you see my article on LastPass? i did i hate that oh man yeah no oh no this is their uh ninth data breach i used really? to be all about it until i found out about it and i use dashly now. nine nine but they have what's called a zero trust platform whether or not that's true we'll, they kind of just throw that terminology out there zero trust platform again is layers no system knows about the other system mm-hmm. technicality but and is that just because they are a target oh yeah or, like, it's a high value target yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. but but um this was a very bad breach because they got people's PII. They did not get the passwords. They got the vaults, mm-hmm. which are encrypted by uh, AES two fifty six, which is just an encryption method. Um but still very bad. Cause now I have that vault, I can just stick that onto a computer and just brute force it. Eventually I will crack it. Whether or not it's gonna be in the next decades a whole other question. Yeah. Uh, you know how fast we get evolved technology so yeah. well and and you know everything we do now is is based on technology so oh, if there's God. a breach i mean th- this article that we had pulled up here is a wall street journal article and it's about just this morning how there was uh some kind of issue with the systems and the faa grounded every like, flight every yeah, I, didn't, flight. I didn't come down to the root cause of it they don't know the root cause of why yeah it was uh and, and this was separate from the southwest to my understanding yes. right so this Completely was like issue. a a something happened early in the early hours of this morning they identified the problem but you know this is what happens right you think about it going down on a monday morning what was it wednesday morning wednesday morning wednesday a lot, morning a lot of people are pissed off right wednesday 20, morning midweek travel Zulu. Yeah, yeah midweek business travel right and then and then you know the worst about all of these is the cascading effect throughout the course of the day right so you ground all traffic right yeah, at what, the morning five, five thousand flights delayed and almost a thousand flights canceled Ugh, and man, then how many miserable. people can be in a plane like a hundred yeah 140 and depending on the size of the plane. so that's that's averaged 150 a pop so that's one hundred fifty thousand. People just plus to, plus tomorrow's flights and you get and those tomorrow's and then yeah. yeah people get all pushed back so yeah, you're it's just talking miserable millions. traveling I oh, yeah, no. I feel for people who like that's what they I do every single week after after traveling. this Christmas like fly, no, fly private I'm, oh, no. God. I'm like you want to see your grandkids come down here I'm not doing this anymore <laughs> I, I got too much going on it is like one of the few places in society where we just completely lose all inhibitions like people are like literally <laughs> like on way. the ground like yeah. crumpled up right sitting sitting next to an outlet somewhere on the floor like this is what it's being deployed in Kuwait looks like <laughs> it is sleeping on the cement somewhere there yeah. you go yeah people well, passed out let's watch know, Ryan private has increased over the past yeah two years and it's not that much more expensive no. honestly like you're doing like private charters. I've actually looked into it. It's like, why wouldn't you do that? It's, like it's, it's like a nice, it's a nice first class ticket essentially. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense if you have like a bunch of uh, like a group of people and you're going somewhere. Um, you might spend a few thousand more. Right. Yeah. But you, split ten ways. You show like, up. So I I heard about a service. Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was basically where you think about how somebody's got to fly. To a location, right? So if a business owner owns a plane, right, it's flying to a location, and then that person or that flight has to go back to the hub, yeah, you could catch that yeah. back huh. flight. Net, right? Is it the, NetJets that does that? It might be. It might be where they're basically like the, the <clears throat> owner of the plane is now recouping some of the cost because the, f- the plane has to go back anyways for refueling and maintenance it's or whatever it is. Just popped in my so head. you could just, yeah, you could, you could jump on the back end of that and you Walmart. Know, save some money. Does not buy its executive hotel rooms. Yeah. Oh yeah, we were talking about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we've they talked buy about the flights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, it they just... they own their entire. They have their mm-hmm. own entire fleet, and right. their yeah, whole philo- right. the whole philosophy was they did not want any of their executives uh, spending night in a hotel. They wanted to make sure they were at home 
by six or seven o'clock and having dinner with their families every single day. So they can visit more stores and be more productive. So like a yeah south uh like a southwest manager not south there but like say a, a manager in, in the southwest region. the yeah. region can go to one location, visit the store, be there for an hour, leave, get back on a plane, fly to another one be there for an hour and you could visit four or five stores uh and then be fly back versus if you had to do a domestic flight you can maybe visit maybe visit one maybe two that's pushing it but then you're staying in a hotel overnight you're not as productive uh, and, and yeah. even from like an accounting perspective as well is um like are you paying a per diem on top of that like not just like a hotel but like are they yeah. getting like a per diem as well so yeah. it's like uh everything's paid for you got a flight gonna go where it needs to go here's your itinerary for the day yep have fun yeah so much easier even from an accounting like oh i have all these receipts for the taxis and the yeah. meals and all this needs to be you know you need to re- re- reimburse me for that like why wouldn't you just yeah that just makes so much more sense to do it that way yep well it's yeah. also like an executive i mean how much they're paying an executive oh, sure. right yeah. so the amount 200, of hours three hundred thousand dollars the year, amount of time easily. is yeah. time and investment right yeah, yeah. so um well uh, i think we have our meme. We, have a meme. we have a meme. Meme. Was it? Did you pick this My meme? meme? Yeah, yeah. It kind of fits the flow of everything. So, just remember, if you uh, ever have a cybersecurity attack and uh, you have a server rack, just break the glass and start yanking cables. Because <laughs> nice. that is the e- that's seriously that's the easiest way. You'll see it in movies all the time. They're like, oh, like cut the, the hard end of free line. guy, end of free guy, where he takes the axe and he's like, pretty much going to take out the yeah. servers. Even right? though the servers are probably offsite, but yeah, you know, that's yeah. a whole other thing. It's a lot harder to do nowadays because you know, everything's, everything's in the cloud. In the cloud right? Yeah, yeah. In the cloud. Everything's yeah. in a data center. And data centers, you want to talk about security? Security, like Amazon. It's like Area Fifty One trying to get in. Like you have like four fences. It's like a prison just in reverse. Yeah, it's a work right. for AWS. Um, you even have to have a TSSCI clearance. Too. Yeah, because AWS has GovCloud. So Amazon, CS, IBM, CIA Google, to, you know. and uh, Microsoft. They all have government contracts. And so all the data centers share real estate with it. But there are different areas that have different security controls. So if you want to go into those data centers... First, you have to have just a confidential to even get in some of those. And if you want to get in those other areas, you have to have other security TSSCI. places. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, that's ultimately a good thing, though, right? Because, I mean, unfortunately, with Web 2.0, right, so much of data is stored we're, we're by, running these, out of data. by these main companies, right? These few big people that have yeah, 75% data. of all website traffic in the world flows through yeah. one location. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's Northern Virginia. And for those who haven't heard uh, our Dissa. podcast on Web3, th- right, yeah, yep. uh, we talked a little bit about the difference between the migration from decentralizing all of this data, right, from it's one be, area It's going to be very hard to. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, that concludes this episode of the Think Fresh Move 4 podcast, and we'll see everyone next week.